time. I suppose the, the downside to going this uh, Tusk is that it kind of telegraphs that it is going to be a Queen of Pain in the core role, but I don't think you mind all that much. And with this Dazzle as well. It's a core Dazzle, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels that way. Seen this a lot uh, through BTS Pro Series. I've got to say, it's been really popping up uh, a hell of a lot. And it's kind of, it's that hero that needs to get to that 18 mark, right? That level 18 is when that, the bad juju kind of becomes ridiculous as an ability. Like the cooldown reduction's insane. The greaves come up. The necro book comes up. He just keeps spamming sh uh, shallow grave over. Like you just can't kill anyone. Uh, yeah. If it gets to that point where he just has level 18 on the dazzle, whether it gets that far is a different story entirely, but that seems to be the trend. If you can drag it out long enough for this dazzle, your team becomes unkillable. Yeah. What could they look to finish this draft off with? I'm thinking they just need more aggression, right? Like one of the reasons why you pick the dazzle with the Ember Spirit is just that you've got uh, constant damage coming out. So that poison touch is just going to be refreshing over and over and over again. And it's really tough to deal with. You need to be playing a bit more on the back foot. I guess the Tusk is all right at dealing with it, right? Because you could just snowball and uh, expire a lot of the duration through on it. But does Fnatic kind of want to go all in on a lot more of this aggression? Like maybe go something themselves with a Void Spirit where they can just jump in and make a lot of this havoc happen and then just be pushing into them because that's exactly what you want is the dazzle you know you don't want to be retreating trying to get a safe shallow uh shallow grave off especially against a weaver no it's uh not going to be the easiest of tasks and uh well neon how do you feel about the weaver like it, it's been it's also been popping up a fair bit i i believe in most cases it does tend to work out it's just a matter of whether they can get a good laning stage and build into that first core item which seems to be the most important for the weaver you know whether it's a whether it's a deso whether it's a, a diffusal blade, uh, if you can get to that point, the weaver kind of becomes ridiculous as a hero, and even the Aghanim scepter on the weaver is kind of broken. Uh, being able to time lapse your teammates back. It is. I, I don't think he'll be going at this time around just because they need the damage right now. Uh, they need to be able to break through it. You need to be able to try and interrupt the earth shaker. You know, if you're able to get that swarm onto shaker, there's only so much that he can do. I don't know. Like I'm a little, I'm a little worried about Neon's damage output still. Right? Like they they always had the inevitability coming for them with the early stages, right? Because they were able to get more from the map by picking these tower pushes and reduce that. So suddenly the only way you're able to get farm is either through kills or through creeps, and they were playing in a really safe space as opposed to getting it from towers or objectives or opening up more of the map. Now, do they really have that same potential? Can they shove out waves quite as easily with this tusk? Probably not, you know? Uh, it's going to be a little bit rougher for them. So, yeah. it's going uh, down to the wire, that's for sure. That it definitely is. 18 seconds reserve time for Neon. Six left for Fnatic. Five seconds. Neon, uh, I mean, look, that. That should be a carry weaver, but it could be an offlane weaver for uh, Raging Potato and they could throw someone else in. Uh, we could still expect Raging Potato to have another offlane pick. Uh, the Quop could be offlane, the Treant could be offlane. It's hard to tell here for Neon, but they're going to round it off now. We should know exactly what's happening. Okay, I believe that might be a mid-tiny we're about to see. It is, probably. Uh, is it? Could be. It could be. The thing that I don't like about that is that it's the only game that I've cast of Neons throughout this entire tournament series that Yopage has lost uh, when he's played this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this mid-tiny. And it's not that he played it badly. I think he still played it great. He did exactly what he needed to do. He ran at their faces and constantly put them on the back foot. But I feel like that's something that you can do as a position for Tiny just as well, right? It's just acting kind of similar to the Earthshaker, but you don't need to wait for the Blink Dagger. You don't need to wait for the Echo Slam every single time around. You can just create a similar level of havoc just without all of the net worth being committed into it. I that that's kind of the same points I used to make as well about that uh that core tiny. It just seems unnecessary uh to give it that XP and farm priority, but 
Neon Esports, they do go back to it. So it is indeed going to be that mid-tiny from Yopage. Skem is going to be playing the Pos 1 Weaver. And now it's a matter of, are you playing Pos 4 Quap, Pos 3 Treant? No, apparently you are not. It is going to be Radic Potato on that Quap. Uh, Janual going to play the Pos 5 Treant Protector. And of course, play hard on the Pos 4 Task. It's an interesting draft. A big switch up here from Neon. The... Uh, uh, I gotta say, personally, when I look at Fnatic's draft, I am a lot more confident looking at theirs than I am at Neon Esports. So am I. Uh, in, you know, the fact that you've got a Dazzle probably going to get a relatively early Necro book, so suddenly you do have some sort of pushing potential. It's not fantastic. You know, the Ursa and the Ember Spirit are not renowned for their potential to do that much to Towers, but still, I, I think it should be okay for them, especially if they are able to get something early on and open up the map a little bit. But Yopaj is going to spend very little time farming up. He is just going to be active, 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 and making as much space for Skem and Ranging Potato, actually, uh, as he can. See how it all pans out between these two. Of course, Neon with the one-game lead thus far. Fnatic look to try and tie out this series to end their day. But, uh, of course, playoffs are starting tomorrow, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know. So today is the final day of the group stages, and this is essentially your final day to leave your mark in those groups. Uh, Fnatic have confirmed their, uh, they are in first place, I believe. Uh, if Neon win this, they are actually. Okay, alright, well there you go. Thank you for that, Tanog. Never mind what I just said. Uh, Neon will overtake if they do get a 2-0 victory. And, uh, yeah. well, they're both they're sitting going... at uh, 13 and 4 at the moment, both of these teams. Okay. Well, in that case, Fnatic, they've got to desperately try and win out this series as you don't really want to, to you know, to, to be in that second place and you don't have pick priority over who you're versing. That's not the way you want to start off if you are Fnatic. The... Absolutely not. I mean, with this Tusk, I, I just keep going back to it, you know, what is this Tusk pick for? Is it to deal with the dazzle is it to deal with the earth shaker is it to save because if you're trying to get aggressive with it other than skem with the geminate attack you don't really have anything that's utilizing the tag team all that much you know there's nothing that you know if you went in combination with an ursa for example eventually when you do get a point into overpower that's a lot of damage uh if you go in combination with the snapfire you can get the one point into the uh the little shredder tons of damage but not really having it this time around so maybe focusing much more on the defense but i feel like that's really what john Ewell's job is so i i don't know it's it's a little odd to me that's fair uh, we'll see what neon does do i mean we'll find out in maybe five ten minutes what the game plan is uh, raging gonna be forced out of that bot lane early on that queen of pain won't be able to secure that bounty but Genuel will be able to find another, and in fact, Neon, they get three in total. Mm -hmm. uh, so, a three for one trade for the side of Neon Esports. Not a bad start. Pretty handy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, play hard. Looks like he will TP down bot from the top lane, so they're not even going to try and abuse that level one tag team timing to try and focus on a first blood attempt up the top. Uh, which I thought they may try to do, but uh, play hard will just come down bot, and maybe they can secure it on jabs. No. Uh, not just yet. He just wants to be able to stand back and start spamming out these Thunder Strikes. He's got the that Sage's Mask already, so he should try and use it ASAP just to make sure that uh, yeah, he's getting maximum effectiveness out of it. And they're going to Savage with that tag team, turning around now onto Jabs, and it's a substantial amount of damage onto Jabs. He'll have plenty of regen to bring himself back up, though, and well, it looks like we're already going to see Playhard trying to block that small camp while he has a second. Mm -hmm. That was a good job. Absolutely was. And, uh, well, you can rotate back in on Savage now. No, the, the creep wave's there. No point doing so. I'm liking Savage as well, making sure he uses the Earth Shock to secure that range creep. Uh, it does just as much damage as a right click at this stage of the game, so why not? And uh, especially when you've got this, uh, this Tusk rotating through and blocking off the camp, there's not the fear of what just happened happening again with the tag mm -hmm. team being used to turn around. Mid lane, Yopar, she's trying to go for the kill. Moon does level up chains and will survive. They are both very low right now. Uh, an extremely close call for Moon. Uh, luckily for him, he did have that level 1 flame guard running uh, before the toss did fly out from Yopar. 
Yeah, uh, we've got a bottle coming out for your page and a healing salve for Moon, so... You have to say you're pretty happy if you're this tiny. Absolutely. It's going to be a bit of a rough time for Moon as well, because you're forced to go for that level 1 chain, so you're kind of missing the value on the level 2 flame guard. Uh, your page might be able to abuse this. Looks like he'll just focus on farming for now. The top lane, Ice Ice Ice, could be in trouble. They do go on top. There is going to be a quick TP out. Do they have the damage? No. The Fisher will save him from taking too much. He does TP back to his T1 tower. Bot lane, however. Savage. Going to be chased up. Play hard with the tag team. But Savage will just turn around. The, it is not easy... Jumping back onto the Ursa now that he's level 3 and I feel much more careful about what they are doing with this task. Yeah. On top side, both <laughs> both lanes pretty happy to just get a, a camp pull happening, although only half of the camp getting pulled by DJ. I'm sure I actually won't mind that considering it's only one creep that uh, is there remaining in the camp. Yeah, nice little efficiency play. It's going to try and deal with Januel on that, uh, that tree. You've only got the level 1 Poison Touch on Ice 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 right now, so it's not like he's willing to really throw it out and get some more harass out, but... Oh, Scam, he's going to come in and try to claim this large creep, but no, DJ does secure it with the Fisher. Nice bit of bonus gold for him on that Earthshaker. Uh, I've got to say, though, like in terms of farm, Skem is having another free game, it seems like, uh, in that top lane, but I suppose I could say the same for Savage down at the bot lane. They are fairly even in terms of farm at the moment. Yeah, fairly even, yeah. Oh, mid lane, they're trying to make a play here onto Yopaj, and he might go down. He's very, very low. He will eat a fairy fire, and Moon, he was out of mana. However, down at the bot lane, Savage does end up dying. Raging to pick up the first blood, and it looks like that uh, the Shards tag team did finally work out for Playhard and, and Potato. Yeah, real keen, and uh, well, again, a little bit of luck coming through for Fnatic being able to secure the... Uh, River Rune once more, despite the fact that uh, Yopaj had the bottle. Moon, not quite yet. It's unfortunate for uh, for Yopaj. They are still looking to try and make a play here onto this mid lane as well. Like, DJ hasn't really left. He's going to make a walk up back towards the north side of the map now, but Januel is going to be there to really block him off and provide a hell of a lot of harass. DJ is t trying to trade, but this could be dangerous. In fact, Januel is now on the run. Fish should have come out, but DJ doesn't block himself up. He'll keep chasing. And you do have Ice 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 slowly making his way in. He doesn't have brown boots, so he can't really keep up. But they should be able to get that 5-minute bounty rune away from Neon. Yeah. Skem's totally happy with that, though, right? He's getting all of this solo XP on the top side. He's already level 5. He's having a great time. That he is. It's... He's like a level and a half ahead of Ice 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 right now. He's only just hit onto his level 4, which yeah, puts the second point into the Poison Touch, and they're trying to make a play onto him now, but <laughs> Fisher actually blocks him off. Yeah, meanwhile, DJ bot lane's going to be in trouble. The Shadow Strike will tick him out. So, Ragey Potato does get his second kill of the game. Uh, this is also kind of allowing Savage to free farm as well on that Ursa right now, so things aren't all too bad for Fnatic. Uh, and in, in, in fact, the uh, the build that Savage is going for, he's actually queued up a Manta. Hmm. It's a bit of a unique one. I guess just wanting to get out of the overgrowth as well as the Shadow Strike? I, I guess. It, it, we could find out later what it's about, but maybe he just switches the uh, the item build. I, I don't believe I've seen a Manta on Ursa as a, as a first item throughout this uh, this pro series yet. This might be the first time though. Mid lane, Yopage. Gonna make a jump now onto Moon. They don't have a way to cancel that TP of Moon. He'll be okay to just go back to the fountain and he may have to just, yeah, he'll remnant his way back into the mid. Ice, Ice, Ice and, uh, and DJ. But just in case. But I fear this does. And that's exactly what he's doing. Speaking. Savage, who's getting walked up on by Yopage right now. Right there, so they know exactly what's happening. Give away some of the vision that they've got down here. I 
believe my internet's gone haywire. Uh, oh. I'm not couple seconds on the stream it might start case but if it doesn't improve I might and it looks like they aren't Uh, looks like he'll be out a little bit with that uphill miss there on your page and a little bit. Yeah, shards gets trend is that it's slightly in favor. Just farming here in this jungle, especially now that it's night time, he needs to be a little bit careful. John Ewell doesn't have any sort of uh, vision to give away. In trouble down at that bot lane. No, Raging's taking a lot of T1 tower hits. Jab's still hiding quite nicely. And uh, John Ewell okay. is going to find him. Poor Jabs. Just have to stay there and kind of just put up with the... Uh, damage that's coming in and I suppose now you could just set up that T1 tower. By the way, Dan, oh, good news, the internet has sorted itself out, so there's no reset happening. Hooray, Australian internet comes in clutch again. <laughs> uh, it's uh, definitely good news. It's uh, the MBN, Dan, oh, you know how it is. It's... Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, it's, it, it's a bit of a funny thing. Mm. I don't mind Jabs being down here, though, because he's still got up onto his level 5, and uh, if they're able to take back one of these outposts, he should potentially have the Static Storm right afterwards. Johnny, well, he's walked right into it. That he has. Genuel going to end up going down. Jabs helping out Savage secure a kill there. And, uh, Savage is going to keep farming up the uh, the Ancient Camps for now. Oh. Meanwhile, Shards go out onto Jabs. He's going to be in a bit of trouble, but now Savage is trying to help out by killing off that Quop, or really just letting him blink away. But Yopaj in there with the Avalanche Toss does kill off the Disruptor, and now Snowball onto Savage. They're going to send both in. Play hard, going to try and run, but Moon does secure the kill. Nice and now dodge. Genuel, he's coming in. Savage is trying to run, but Yopaj has the damage. He will get the double. Now chasing for more. He's going to go after DJ, perhaps, or even even Moon, who does only have one remnant left. Can they keep up? Oh man, they're not able, even able to get back the outpost after all of that. It was some really nice individual play coming out from Moon. I think he slight dodged that uh, Queen of Pain ultimate as well, but you could just see the impact of keeping that outpost that it has. I mean, Potato, he's level eight and a half, and so is the mid laner right now on Fnatic's side. He's first on net worth. It is kind of insane. Uh, it really, really is. And, oh, Raging's going to have that blade mail up now. That's uh, going to be a problem for the side of Fnatic. Is it's really going to allow that Quap to start going and well, top three net worths now. Just your Paj, the Weaver, and Queen of Pain, and I believe we just had a smoke up mid lane. Your Paj and Playhard, they're going to make a rotation. Into that top lane, DJ is going to be around. He might be the one to break the smoke. Got this uh, backstab here. Echo Slam recently acquired by DJ. Could be a big deal. He'll snowball in onto the Earthshaker. Warrus Punch gonna be there. DJ probably won't be willing to commit the Echo here. He might just have to die in a great shards out. And DJ understanding he's just gonna have to let his life go. On the brighter side, it does allow uh, Savage and, and Moon to walk away from that situation. Uh, but I, I say that Yopaj is still chasing. He wants to go after Savage now. He's gonna go for the toss play, but he does get scouted out. They are gonna dive in. He does pop in range. Yopaj now wanting to back off as Moon is also rotating in with jabs. They are gonna get a nice static storm off onto that tiny. Yopaj, he's gone too far and will die. And now even Skem's gonna be in trouble. He'll get chased down, trying to Sukuchi, but the remnant is gonna be on point. He will time lapse back the other way. 
And with that salve, he probably will survive. And he does have a TP just in case. Can they go for a blind chain? No. Moon wasn't even close enough for it, so... At least they get the kill onto that uh, onto that mid tiny. It's a big deal. It is, and you can see what they were trying to do as well. I mean, play hard. He was there with a the snowball potentially for the save, but uh, that static storm means that you have to be positioned absolutely perfectly to be able to pull that sort of stuff off. And top tower, despite the living armor, it should still be going down. That it should be. Living armor not going to help out that much. It's uh, surrounded by three heroes. Instead, though, you look at mid lane. Neon is starting to force that in a bit. But I believe they should have plenty of time to defend. And uh, DJ is going to be there. Moon will also be there. However, you do have a bit of a surround here. They are going to jump onto Moon. He doesn't actually have mana for another remnant usage. He'll have it in a second. They don't actually make the dive onto him. So he'll be fine anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll just stick around and defend this. I I believe with this uh with this neon esports draft because they just can't push fast enough. They're just gonna have to walk away. Yeah, that's the thing. They they don't have the same level of I don't want to say scaling, but snowball potential, right? With Scam here, he hasn't even put a, a bought a single blightstone, so he's not gonna be able to even just put some passive damage onto the tower. Let the creeps do the majority of the work. He's gonna keep pushing it into the tower though, which is a a nice effective use of his time. What item do you think he will go for? Because I, I was kind of sure he was just going to go straight Deso. In fact, hold that Thorka's top lane. Sonic Wave is huge out from Raging Potato. Now the overgrowth cancelling TBs. Jabs will die. Savage couldn't get to the low ground with the, uh, with the stomp. And he does go down. It's a one for two trade. Uh, play hard losing his life on the tusk. You, uh, you won't mind that though. No, won't mind it at all. Oh, need to be a little careful here about getting caught out by DJ, who's slowly but surely avoiding these team fights quite well. Sure, he's died once, but uh, it's not the end of the world, and he's getting closer and closer to that blink dagger. Um, maybe with this Skem Weaver, maybe we'll see something like a Maelstrom just to be able to deal with the Necro Book a little bit easier from the uh, the Dazzle, do a bit more damage in team fights, get rid of the Flame Guard a bit quicker here on the Ember Spirit. Could be. We'll find out soon. Still just holding on to 2.5k. He does go for the Maelstrom build, it seems. So, Alright, I, I guess that kind of works. It's uh, mid lane though. Moon. Avalanche won't catch him out. He does manage to remnant away. Yopage is not giving up on this. He wants to keep going. Raging as well. They do force out a nice little scream there. But Moon will be able to just remnant out. And it seems as though Skem has just outright bought the Maelstrom now. This is the difference here though. Oh, are they going to be able to catch him in range for the glimpse? It's only level 2. Yepage. Yeah, fish it up. He's got nowhere to go. Great block out from DJ. And uh, yeah, this mid tiny. He's through 3 and 2 right now. It's not exactly the greatest score. And You talked about scaling earlier on. This tiny, he may not scale at all. So... Uh, not good news for Neon Esports. Yeah, I mean, Tali, Tiny is one of those people that scale with levels, so sure, putting him in the mid lane is fine, but with this somewhat greedy way that Neon like to play... Ooh, with mid lane. Sports. Echo. DJ committed there on Raging. It wasn't enough. Raging does Blade Mail. Walks back around. Sonic Wave on poor Jabs, who was just trying to hide in the tree line. And uh, it's not the worst loss in the world, but they did not get that first Echo kill onto that Quap, and... Well now, even though they lost that tiny, he's back up and they're rotating for more. DJ has been spotted out here by Skem. He's getting closer to that blink dagger as well, so he really wants to avoid this death if he can. Uh, it looks like he can't though. They're surrounding and they just kill him off very easily. He tried his best to just outrun them. Just couldn't do it though. Oh man. Alright, well, Potato's a little low on his uh, mana, so you can tell that Neon want to keep the pressure up. Uh, just not going to be quite able to. That haste rune, as well as the blink dagger picked up by Yopage, though, means that uh, there's a lot of kill potential coming up very shortly. That is true. You mentioned they went that really interesting build on that Quop as well. The uh, yeah. the mech the mechanism. Mm -hmm. I think just mech on its own, obviously very mana intensive, so you don't really want to. Uh, make that the only thing you're going for but we can see here go on the greaves 
making sure it's uh, a bit more sustainable for themselves and they're all grouped around this mid lane trying to get the loot behind with this weaver mid lane they do try and make the jump. Ice, he's going to be okay. He'll go for the Shallow Grave early on. They're still going to surround him, and he won't have help coming in. They really have no choice but to let Ice die, and now we'll scam. He's going to chase Savage, who was farming near the area. Does scout him out, gets a swarm placed on the Fuzzy Wuzzy. He will try and take the bug out immediately, but Skem is not giving up on the chase. Shards going to fly out there. Perfect. Now the toss out, though, from Yopage. Snowball there. He's trying to get to his high ground, but he can't. Neon, yeah, this they're, is they're some making a great work. divide and conquer happening right now. They, uh, well, except for that, the uh, the double century words coming out. But the fact that they prioritize the key targets that they want to go for first and foremost, of course, it's uh, Skem. But they realize that every single team fight that they've lost up until that point had been when you've got Jabs, who's available to get this nice kinetic field static storm combination. So pop in the haste, making sure to make a beeline for Jabs, making him use the glimpse, and then only once that was done were they fully committed onto this Ursa. So really liking the way that Neon are going about it. Moon's going to go after Playhard down at that, uh, that Radiant Outpost. And well, they get the Outpost, but they lose that task. And now Skem, he's been glimpsed back into a Static Storm. That's going to be a big pickoff. Maybe a bit of an overconfidence play there from Neon. I suppose it does force the whole side of Fnatic to go down to that jungle to get that kill. I, I just don't know if you really want to lose that Pos1 Weaver like that. Not necessarily. He went for the... Uh the time lapse play right at the end of the glimpse, but uh, with the static storm being laid down there, there's nothing he can do at all. Burn. Might just find Raging as well. He uh, does pop the mech now. Turning around, Sonic Wave! Moon, he may have overestimated how much damage he had. And now DJ goes down to Yopage, and well, Raging's getting all the tips. Why not? The baits are real. Yeah, it's great bait. I, I don't believe they actually saw the mech was available and raging at the time they maybe just didn't weren't aware he had that up and now he's got the greaves so he actually doesn't actually have to spend any money to use it it's a very nice feeling jabs about to go the urn is there shards right up the backside and jabs it's a, a cold game for him right now he does go down again raging meanwhile will take the mid t1 tower and dj up at the top lane does at least secure a kill onto Januel there with savage but uh, that, that is the best they're finding at the moment. Yeah, I mean, do you really care if your Treant's dying here? There's no objective to take around that. I guess Roche, but that's not what they're worried about right now. No, I wouldn't imagine they are. Yopage, Avalanche, toss onto Moon. Just a bit bit of a threat in there. As they're actually going to try and go onto Ice Ice Ice. The Shallow Grave? No, he just can't get it off in time. Try and succeed. They're still going in on Moon. Oh, Moon's going in on them, it seems like. And Echo comes in. DJ, he does get a great one, but Yopage gets an even better avalanche toss. Moon will die once again. DJ will also end up dying. Raging Potato right now on this Quop is 9-0-7. And, seven. and uh, I thought it was a great initiation out from DJ, but they just turned so quick. Yeah, I mean, that, that turnaround potential, like you mentioned, is absolutely fantastic on their team. But, you know, with Yopage... He's just able to constantly do that in the middle of these team fights. It was DJ able to get one off at the start of that fight, and it worked out so perfectly, but it's just happening over and over and over again for Neon. It's just beautiful plays out from this dire side, and now Yopage actually goes, buys up a, a quick Yules for himself, so just a bit more, uh, bit more utility on this Tiny. You look back to Savage on the Ursa. He is seemingly going for that Battle Fury build now on the Ursa. After picking up the Yasha, has been a bit of a slow game for Savage though. He really hasn't had any free space after that uh, that initial laning stage. And uh, with the pace Neon setting in this game, it seems like he just he's really struggling to, to farm as fast as he usually does. Absolutely. I mean, this is this is the raging potato show right now. Just the baits coming out, the farm sitting at the top of net worth despite being in that offlane position. He's nearly got a Yules for himself, so good luck trying to take him down at all. Absolutely. Oh, Fnatic, they're just going to stay grouped up. So there are strength in numbers. In fact, they may go for a smoke attempt here, and Jabs does pop it, but misses out on DJ. DJ won't mind. He'll maybe just bait for the team. 
Also, at the same time, Battle Fury does come out, and Necro 3 book does come out for Ice 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 and 23 Savage. So, it's pretty handy. Uh, some nice power spikes, but there's a counter smoke. Counter smoke coming through. They know they're not in the Roche pit, making sure to walk right past that. Man, if they were able to catch out DJ at the start of this, this would be enormous. Yeah, they didn't scan out no, that arcade room being taken. DJ doesn't want to die like this. He does blink away, but Scam's already there in your page. We'll blink in for the avalanche toss. They Savage might still go in. for this. Yeah, they'll still go for the fight. Static Storm's going to be there on Raging, but he popped the Blade Mail. He is just fine. That will do Wait. nothing. They're still trying. Skem gets Ice Ice Ice. Sonic Wave, Moon still trying to run away. Skem is on the chase now with Savage, and it looks like the Shards will lock Moon in, but he will remnant out. Now Raging still chasing him down, though, giving vision to Yopage to get the Avalanche Toss off, and it looks like Savage. I thought uh, he was going to be in danger, but no, he is still. They are still chasing him down. They might just settle for jabs, but they're diving the fountain again. <laughs> Why not? What is going on? Oh boy, Neon Esports. Who is the? What is this team? Oh man, the dive. There's no towers taken on this top side of the map, and they're like, screw it. The fountain is where we need to be right now. They saw that it was 23 minutes into the game, and they're like, hey, didn't we finish game one at around this time? <laughs> it was. Uh, it was at this time indeed. Looks like your page is going to get chased down a little bit there from Ice Ice Ice, but they really can't do much without the uh, without some proper catch, and your page may just turn now. Luckily, they don't have vision on Ice Ice Ice, otherwise he would have been. Or well, maybe now they will. In fact, no, they're uh, they're heading towards that Roshan pit, so it's about that time now where they should have the damage output with the tag team. There's no way to counter this for Fnatic. Well, a big Echo Slam might do it, but uh, you can see here they're just spread out perfectly again. Their positioning in these team fights has been amazing on Neon Esports, and well, what can you really do at this stage? They're trying to use the Necro books for a little bit of information, but well, as soon as they see him get in, they just leave. Burn does end up going in, does just get Avalanche tossed. Your Page now is going to run away. Gems found DJ. They'll glimpse him up, but DJ's in trouble. Static Storm there on two. DJ does die, however. And well, play hard. He's about to die on the Tusk and finally does. Moon picks up the kill, but now the overgrowth is there. Savage, still enraging, does just run through it. But now he might just be kited. <laughs> Your Pash throws away Skem, so Savage can't actually go for him. Now they use up the Ursa. Can he actually kill the Tiny? No! They put a GG branch in front of him as well. Oh, they're styling on them now. Absolutely, and even Skem now with this uh, Scarab on the Roshan is like, well, let's continue to take advantage of it. Why not? Your punch might be in a little bit of danger here, but uh, you've got the Guardian Greaves coming up in another 10 seconds, Living Armor on top of him, so he'll be fine. Neon Esports. They get the first H of the game. Not a great feeling when you've got a when you've got an Ursa on the side of Fnatic. It's really something they would love to take. Uh, I, I guess you just keep playing the catch-up game for Fnatic, right? Like, there's not a, there's not really much else you can do, but just try and drag this out to the later stages. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure what that's going to do, really. I mean, a Weaver's pretty strong as it gets later on, and you can just see him. It's not always just about going in on the first hero that you see. He's constantly scouting out these supports, making sure that they're the priority. Maybe not so much now with the uh, Moon on the bot oh, side, but you can't stand in Mad Fight. <laughs> <laughs> not with the Mjolnir up. That's for sure. And, uh, Underneath this uh, t level 3 Necro book, though. Fish art. They might just commit Echo. No, they don't. Scam. They, not want to, they don't want to use it on the Aegis. That's the thing. Oh, they right. found DJ, though. Yeah, Yopaj. Great toss there with the blink in. And DJ is going to die. And I, I do appreciate that. They don't want to just waste the Echo on that uh, on that Aegis that time around. But it's, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's like, what else do you do here if you're Fnatic? Like, what play do you have? Even Jab's top lane is going down. Yeah, see you later. It's complete map control being taken by Neon Esports. Uh, Fnatic is still trying to get out of the base and just feel comfortable to farm. Just seems like there's nowhere safe, apart from maybe the top lane where Savage is. But even he's going to TP out now. Like Genuel. He scout him out. Savage does one the opposite way. Tinker Ward being placed from Januel, but won't scout him out. And well, they must assume now that Savage must have TP'd out. He's just being cheeky. <laughs> It'll be fine. All right. 
27 minutes. What is the perfect neutral item to potentially bring Fnatic back into this game? Hmm. Uh, repair kit would be nice because you're getting Fine. pushed a fair amount. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely probably would be the way to go here. See what they get, Mindbreaker. Paladin Sword comes out for Raging Potato, which is going to feel quite nice. The mind break is not really what you want. Uh, it, it's nice, but it's not nice enough. I think it might be enough to scare Skem into popping a BKB early, but not so much while he's got this Aegis. So maybe if you didn't have that second life, it, it would be a bit more impactful. Right. That, that is true. Bot lane. They're just clearing out the creep wave. Almost seems like they're preparing for a tier 3 push. Glyph is going to be expended. Telescope's handy uh, to have, particularly on Ice Ice Ice. That is a very, very nice item indeed. You've already got the the keen optic on jabs, so you can have that uh, double increased cast range. See if they do opt to use it. For now, he's just holding on to that shovel. Bot lane, they're still sticking around here. Play hard, just scouting out with the shards. Fnatic have bought themselves enough time so that Moon has his BKB up now, so at least you've got that, and that's actually a fair bit of damage out onto Skem, just with one sleight of fist. Yeah, he killed the Necrobook as well. Oh, of course. Skem, Fisher, they have the control, Aegis is still around, he might just let it expire, but now the Overgrowth, oh. the Sonic Wave, is there from Raging Potato, and now they're just committing all the way. DJ's about to fall right in front of his fountain. Raging, no, they can't get it. He does get healed up. But they're just blocking the entrance. Static right, Storm is there. Slam, though. They do. Make a big play here. There it is. The Echo comes out. DJ, he finds all four of them. The damage is insane. But is it enough? It definitely will be. Three heroes go down. Skem's making a run for it. They are on the chase. And Neon Esports are getting punished for their overly confident play of standing in front of a, a Radiant Side Fountain. Skem will at least get himself out, but... That's going to be a fair bit of golden XP going back the way of Fnatic. A little bit of overconfidence is uh, completely correct. I mean, have a look at that win probability. It was looking not so great for Fnatic, but uh, a bit of a jump up, it has to be said. It's a significant jump, about 10%, maybe even more than that. The, well, Fnatic now going to be feeling a bit of momentum behind them after that big echo. I'm uh, kind of shocked Neon weren't expecting that to fly out, especially being how clumped up they were. Uh, DJ's yeah, I mean, easiest oh, echo of his jabs. life. This is a dieback as well if he goes down. Jabs, shards. Oh, it's just on point. Play hard tusk. Just connecting all the shards perfectly this game, apart from maybe one. And, uh, they could honestly just go right now on Neon. You know they, they, you know they don't have an echo slam. You know they don't have a disruptor for the next 50 seconds. Just take some of these outer towers. Oh, ice, 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 no. Uh, he does use that, uh... In fact, he was ethereal'd up. We'll be alright, though. Shallow Grave eats a salve, and... I guess it's, uh... The one positive of still holding that trusty shovel is he's getting free salves out of it. So he's just consistently just salving himself through this game, even if we're 30 minutes in. Nice and handy. Small misplay from Neon there, not uh, recapturing their own shrine that they had in the safety of their jungle. So all that experience went to Fnatic. That's, that's good news for Fnatic. Neon will uh, take the outpost back. And they do head back down to that bot lane. So they want to continue applying this pressure and forcing Fnatic back. So you can see Fnatic, they weren't able to really leave the base uh, just five minutes ago. And now they're just roaming freely across the map. Uh, I, it seems like Neon want them back in that pace, but it's not going to be the, that easy to force them back. So. That is true. I'm liking the fact that he's going through and uh, farming up this double stack of the Ancients here. Just trying to take as much farm away from them. You're always going to be able to farm faster too. And he's got that Paladin Sword in combination. So it's a ton of damage coming through very quickly. And, and that tag team's going to do a lot now that he's got all this movement speed, especially with the Mjolnir. That is, uh, it's going to be a problem. I have Skyler to come out next for Skem now. But, uh, already so much damage from this Weaver. Uh, with that, I have Skyler up, it just, it reduces so much of what the Dazzle can do in terms of uh, healing and sustain. 
Oh, this Tinker Ward's really nice as well on the top side. They can see that DJ is shadow amuleted here underneath, and they can make the perfect play for it if they want. That that they are. They can also see Savage, so Raging jumps in with the Lotus Orb. Savage has a TP, has an Abyssal. Might feel like he can try and turn, but he must realize he's surrounded. They do go in, but there's the TP cancellation. Thanks to Yopage. Now the toss up. A great Sonic Wave once again with the Overgrowth flying out, and they are just sitting ducks. DJ will die. Savage has no chance. He does try to fight back, but there's no chance in hell of that happening. And well, now a bounty was placed on the task. But I think Playhard's going to be fine. Yeah, I think he'll be just fine. But uh, that's the power of information, right? These wards in unconventional spaces. There's really no need to have a defensive Tinker Ward at this uh, part of the map right now. If anything, you're trying to take the aggression to them, but just thinking one step ahead and the mind game's coming through from Neon. It's so unfortunate as well, because that ward actually expired as they died. Oh, they Moon. Okay. Lane. He backs off. He'll be right. It's a slowish Roshan respawn as well. Another two minutes from now. Uh, just reaching the minimum timer. It's uh, definitely going to buy Fnatic more time. In fact, you might have some uh, some way to kind of get in get in range of that Roshan pit and maybe take control of that area. But your Paj, Avalanche, no, just the toss. Fisher and Glimpse is going to save Jabs for now, but the shards are there. He's uh, still being delayed here with his death. Shallow Grave now to fly out from my size size. They do pop the urn, really wanting this kill onto Jabs, but Skem not able to find it, and Jabs will be able to walk out of there. He's going to live, doing a nice job here. Oh, your has been caught out a little bit. No, he's got the spider legs. <laughs> Fisher who? <laughs> he's just perfectly fine. They are just still waiting for that Roshan. They'll control this radiant side, uh, radiant side triangle. Uh, still, I think Savage is getting to a point now on that Ursa where he's becoming a bit more of a concern with that Abyssal on. Uh, even the Nullifier to come out next could be a problem here for Neon. Alright, so Fnatic, up. they might be baited into going for this Roshan. They just had the scan on the pit, although actually they do have the Necro Warrior, or sorry, Archer underneath it, so they know it's not really a factor. It's good news for them. Still though, this smoke's going to lead to nothing. Maybe just, yeah, you can place a nice ward down, take control of the triangle again. But a Fnatic, not really going to be able to get that uh, that important pick off to set up for that next Roshan that they were probably looking for. And that Roshan is up in 25 seconds now. I think this Roshan you can't really afford to lose, right? Because it does mean Neon can just go high ground straight after. Mm-hmm. I'll have a look at the buyback situation as well. There's only three, but a lot of people very close to picking it up. Well, I say that. Skem just finishes up his Scardi, so he's going to be a little bit short on gold, if that is the case. And uh, Korea scouting out Roche a little bit. It's going to be there right as it respawns in 3, 2, 1. It does <laughs> die, though. The Archer <laughs> does take it out. Neon still not dissuaded by their Courier dying. Raging is going to run up to that high ground. They... Do seem to know he's there. He does now scout out for the team, but does get purged up by that archer again. So Raging gonna back off. Look to go back in. Savage could be in trouble. They're does putting him on the front lines. Yeah, your parched could be in trouble now, actually. He's taking a lot of damage here, but he is still surviving. Savage, yours no, will survive for now. Now the Sonic Wave flying through. Your parched does die, but he'll buy back immediately. They continue this team fight. Nice Walrus Punch onto Savage, just slowing him down even more. You don't have Jabs there to help him out. Skem will just make sure he sticks around now with the Overgrowth to fly out as well from that Tree and Protector. And Savage is going to die with no buyback. But we do have a disconnection now from Fnatic. Yeah. Not realizing uh, that he does not have buyback for at least 28 seconds, but you know, Neon don't know that. That's fine. Uh, you can just see DJ's perched up on the Radiant High Ground, waiting for the perfect Deco Slam, but uh, this pause might be a little bit of a double-edged sword for them, with Neon being able to catch their breath and say, Ooh, actually, we're dangerously grouped up right now. Let's not go for this. Where is DJ? Yeah, there he is. He is actually in range. Sort of. Very, very close now. But without the buybacks there, I, it's... I don't know. Maybe Moon could do the damage. He has rendered it in. Uh... 
see what happens here. Paj is spider legging his way in, so that's going to be an extra hero there if he does keep going. Back to... Yeah. I, I mean, think they I might actually try. Yeah, I mean, with that Tiny as well, he was so close to living, he just, uh, with his toss right at the end there, he was waiting to use the Yule Scepter to dodge the uh, the last ticks of the Static Storm damage, of course, with it doing more towards the end of it. Um, but uh, just tossed the Necro unit instead of the Ursa away, so wasn't able to get that uh, last little bit of survivability off, uh, which is a shame because he had the regen bottled as well and could have right. just been free to join the team fight right straight away again. That is problematic. But this team fight right here, like, if you could find that four or five man Echo, because I believe the Echo will reach play hard as well. Moon, with that Maelstrom and the Aghanim Scepter and the BKB, might actually be able to clear these guys out. I'm not, I'm not saying he could 100%. Skem could probably time lapse away. But I don't know. That Echo could be a lot of damage here from DJ. I think if he was level 25, I would give him a chance. Okay. But without it, not so much, unfortunately. Weaver's going to be able to level up his level 25 talent as well. So we'll see how he chooses to go with that one. And they won't yeah. bother. You are right, Moon. Oh, no. In fact, he is still in there. Skem is going to go after him now. Moon, have you ever extended? Avalanche is out. He does still have Remnants and his BKB. He's just waiting out. But now the toss comes out. Moon! Echo comes in, though. DJ Guys, anyway. trying to save... Moon is dead, however. The Weaver attacks just chased him down. He will buy back immediately. You've wasted that Echo now, though, and you couldn't follow up to it. And Moon going back in, trying to save Isai Sice, but he will die. And Neon. DJ. <laughs> DJ's just in the Shadow Amulet. There's no detection. They'll kill him the old-fashioned way. And they do get him. So now, two heroes up. One buyback on DJ. It's not really even worth using it, right? He's already used the Echo Slam. You want to make sure that, uh, well, he's kind of forced to, you know? They just don't want to lose later on Skem. Fisher. Oh. Static Storm there. They have caught the big target. Snowball not really going to be on point. They do toss him out. Skem will be fine. Now the BKB popped. Moon, he can't really risk his life by waiting for that BKB. So he'll go on to Raging. But now just doesn't do any damage. Just forced to rim it out. So Skem will just Sakuchi the way back in with that Desolator. He hits like a truck. And the Living Armor on himself. And he's got Lifesteal if he's able to hit a creep at all. And a Dagon right now on Yapage as well. Just uh, just flying out on the Courier, just on top. And, uh, well, they'll get the melee Barracks and they'll go for the Roshan play, maybe. Where were you when you saw E-Blade, Dagon, Tiny? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all I want to know. It's, uh... It's it's a unique unique kind of build, but your Paj is making it work. I mean, he's his kill score isn't crazy, but it's still working. And now a bounty's been set onto Raging. He is 15, 1, and 19 right now, and Raging obliges. He jumps in onto Moon and dares. He's them. got the fear, so he's pretty keen to make these aggressive movements. Basically, a brand new hero now with that uh, that scream of pain, fear. Yeah, Scam as well. He's uh, like a mini Bloodseeker right now, just zipping around the map with that extra 160 Shikuchi movement speed. It's a very balanced kind of talent, isn't it, Danov? Mm-hmm. Balance in all things. Absolutely. They'll go back into that Roshan now. Yeah, now that they've got control over the area. Why not? And, uh, Fnatic, I mean, they expended so many buybacks with that base defense. There's no chance of trying to deny this Roshan away, and well, they're not going to make it in time anyway. Skem will just take out the Rosh way too quick. And, uh, I'm not sure what the snowball was about, but I guess just in case, they were going to jump in. Skem now has an Aegis. Yeah, good luck killing him. That's all I got to say. He hands off the cheese over to the Quop. Uh, obviously more useful than the Magic Wand for just keeping yourself survivable, and Illusionist Cape pretty damn handy as well. Fnatic just doing the all they can right now, which is just keep split pushing lanes, force the uh, the rotations in from Neon to try and deal with him. So uh, got jabs there as well. Jabs the real susceptible one here, but they won't actually go for them. So Neon back into that mid lane. They're trying to just push out this wave a little bit, but Raging Potato he's there trying to interrupt Moon a little bit, maybe spook him, force that BKB to be popped. Yeah. 
No, he'll just remnant out. He'll be fine. He does have the axe. Nearly reveals jabs inadvertently just by destroying all these trees. <laughs> Poor chaps. Top lane, perhaps they look to make a play here on Yopaj, but Yopaj is baiting right now. Skem is right around the corner. DJ, he, he blinked in, but Skem, he'll go for him. He has a Divine now. This Weaver just buys a Divine outright while he's there. They do jump on Yopaj, but you've got to watch out for that Weaver. Overgrowth comes in. Sonic Wave on Jabs. He'll barely survive, but Ice 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 will not. He dies mid-TP. Jabs will die, and now it looks like they'll also lose Moon, perhaps. No, he remnants, but the chase is there. Skem will get a triple now on to the Ursa once again. Savage has been left alone to try and deal with this side of Neon by themselves. And uh, Skem is going back to the T4s it seems. While Savage is being controlled here up the top lane. Still trying to man fight. Skem is just base racing against himself apparently. Doesn't want that kill on the Ursa. He's just playing with him a little bit. He's got the Walrus Punch back available. Gets used. Still alive somehow on Savage. But uh, that base is melted. Yeah, tier four's gone. Savage is still up in the air I mean, right now. Are they doing this so he can't buy back and stop the defense? I, I, I don't know. It seems that way. They bought a hell of a lot of time, and uh, it did get them one tier four tower. Uh, he has the buyback gold, so he's gonna have to buy back now, I believe. If they could somehow kill Skem and get the divine rapier. You could make the argument they could come back into this game somehow, but this is going to be their only chance. They're in front of the Fountain Savage. He has started jumping onto Raging, but Play Hard will save the day, so Raging can blink out. Yep, Raging and Play Hard, they're achieving their roles, right? Like, uh, you've got a level 26 Queen of Pain. He's going to be able to live oh, through most things. Yeah. And just the towers. Savage getting Yule's up. Do they have a shards? No, Fisher will be there. Savage, he did get sharded up, but he will be just inside of the Fountain. They've got they an Echo, but there's really no reason for them to clump up at all. Raging, he got Gims back. This could be a nice opening, but he pops the Blade Mail. They just can't afford to really go after him with that on. Uh, you're just constantly concerned about where this Weaver is, because he's hitting for almost 600 damage per auto attack. Oh. Jabs! Oh, poor Jabs! He's trapped by the Fisher as well. Let him out! 23 Savage is going to come back in, but the Walrus Punch is there. He might die. The Echo, it's huge from DJ. Is it enough, though? Maybe it is. They do kill off the Weaver once. That'll be the Aegis. Raging Potato also goes down. They've got to get him a second is time. The Can they bash? It could be. He BKBs, but no. He goes down. Savage has got the Rapier, or rather Play Hard does, but it is on the deck now. Savage will take it. Have they thrown this game? Your oh. is getting caught out as well. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I think uh, Fnatic, Fnatic may have made a whoopsie. Yeah, I mean, there's really no need for that, right? Like, why do you need to stand underneath a tier 4 tower? They'd use the glyph, at least get the megas, and then throw, you know? Because you've got this uh, passive pressure that's going to be coming through. But I was about to say, wait for those lines to just be drawn on the map. Jab's doing his best to push out this top side, just so that there's no, uh, you know, pressure being put onto the Radiant base in the meantime. But... Is he going to push this one out? Maybe TP towards the shrine there after it's taken by Ice Ice Ice? No, they're just making a beeline for it. Oh, I, I think you have to. You, you've been so far behind this whole game. It's just like, screw it. Let's just go for this uh, this finish here and force the buybacks out right now. They get one. Savage understands, though, if he loses the Divine Rapier, the game could just go back to being over for Fnatic. So he has to try and make sure he doesn't die here. But he is... Kind of by himself. Able to use the glyph to make sure the backdoor protection's there and available. Wisely done by Raging Potato going down towards this bottom side of the map, keeping bot lane pushed in as well. Love the fact that uh, that Savage is at the top of the net worth board now as well with that Divine Rapier. So you basically just put him back in the game and I, I just... If you're, if you're a fanatic, like... Yeah, you're, you're, what, you're two racks is behind. The, the bot racks are still safe, but you just drag this out now, right? You just wait for that, that mistake, that impatience to happen from Neon. Try and wipe them and then just go back to the base. Yeah, I mean, especially if you have a look at the bar or who's been caught out bottom. Oh no, Moon, he's, he's going to be able to get away. Uh, have a look at the buyback status. Only Weavers just came up. So Fnatic are definitely in a bit of preservation mode right now. 
It's, uh, it's getting uh, pretty wacky here in this game. Neon. It's going to be very, very careful. They've got to keep eyes on Savage. It's uh, also hitting for 600 damage now. And, uh, he can hit a lot faster. So, Savage looks like he's just going to try and farm up that Desolator before he goes in again. I wonder if it's something about the Radiant Fountain that just makes them forget that DJ has Echo Slam. <laughs> Is, are there like mind-bending properties about it? I, it, it might be, because that is the second time they got echoed and kind of wiped in front of that fountain. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I think they've just got to stay away from that from now on and probably just secure the game if they want a 2-0 victory. It's but literally I... the only place on the map that you can never have vision, so they've been pretty good at controlling that aspect of the game, but it's, uh, it's not like... It's not half a game, you got to complete it, right? It's Absolutely. 100% of the map. Which I think is the problem, is like, you look at Yapage, he doesn't have his Dagon 5 yet. Which is what he... I guess maybe that's why they threw, right? They just... More memes to come out from Neon now. You know? So... Oh, double damage, bot side of the river, that is handy. That is handy. Who do you give it to, though? Oh, of course, Skem. Skem. He's got the bottle. And it uh, looks like he's going into a Satanic just to say, hmm, I don't want to die again. I mean, he could have even time-lapsed when he got uh, burst down there in the Radiant base. It was a problem. Are they going to run into this? Fanatic? Smoke's going to reveal and Yopaji can just get straight out. Oh, he blinks out just in time. Moon is still diving. Januel is around Yopaj to help him out. They do get the slide of fist. Now Raging going to be in trouble. Blade Mail activated, but it's not doing enough up against the Enrage of Savage. That's a buyback. No Skem's pushing in mid lane. They're going to need to deal with it. And John Ewell's just sitting down here trying to interrupt it as much as he can. <laughs> Poor guy. Then you are probably uh, a very confused tree right now as to how the game's ended this way. After all his hard work supporting his team. Reminds me of my pubs very much, Danog. Mm hmm. It's like all you needed to do was hit the racks. <laughs> 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 Fnatic now gonna start, start securing some map control and I, I think this is the time to play like 80 seconds without the quap you couldn't have asked for a better time they know she died back so Fnatic can they make it happen yeah well they're trying for it it gets the uh, living armor preemptively onto the tier 3 tower they don't have glyph for another minute and John was forced to TP back already Savage. Wave cutting going on? Not really, they're just standing behind their towers. Fnatic though, that it's a slow process, even with that Divine. Savage, Avalanche gonna fly in, he'll be fine. Just trying to see if he can catch out that Weaver. Skem, the oh there's yeah. the Abyssal there, with the Static Storm now. They've got him in place, he's been controlled up and he does die, but he will have buyback. He's just GG waiting. Trees help Jornual a little bit, but only so much. <laughs> they do fly back on the Weaver. These trees are still being placed by Jornual. Trying to get out of there, back to the fountain. It looks like they'll secure the mid racks and back up the back scam. Force the BKB now. So those chains did come out from Moon, latching him in, but he does get out intact. And they are pinging out the Roshan pit, but it's 50 seconds away. Oh... I did not predict that this was how this game was going to turn out, that's for sure. <laughs> Even the, with the Rapier, like, 30 to 70% win rate is uh, what we're predicting here. You look at that net worth graph as well, I mean, they had they had almost 30k advantage. 30k! All gone! It's, uh... That, that graph hasn't updated yet, but it is the way of Fnatic now. And there we go, now it's updating. And, uh... If Fnatic can get that Roshan with the Divine on top, maybe that's it. Maybe they'll ha be confident enough to just go straight high ground with the buyback from the Weaver as well. I I don't know if Neon can contest that Roshan play that's going to happen soon. I mean, they kind of have to though. That's the issue. And especially now that they don't have a buyback on the Weaver, it becomes a do or die sort of team fight. The optimist in me thinks that, all right, if this was playoffs, 
and this was like an elimination game and really mattered, they go for the, the racks. And hopefully that's something that their coach can also say to them like, guys, come on, <laughs> use your head a little bit next time. Uh, but now, you know, the, the issue that we were having before, right, where it's like, well, you've got this tiny that can constantly make these reinitiations. Now you've got DJ with two Echo Slams, having picked up that refresher shot. Uh-oh. That's, uh, I mean, he's been on point those last few times with those Echoes, and he's kind of the reason they're in this game still, Fnatic. It's with a double Echo out from DJ, if he gets a perfect Echo Slam like he has the last few times, it's going to be hard. But I believe there's also now an Aghanim Scepter up on Savage. He just wants to buy the Blessing so he doesn't have to carry it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit short on money, though. Still 1,500 gold away. We'll have to keep buyback gold as well, surely. Like, you've got the Aegis, but this game is so close. Yeah, well, he's actually gone away from the Blessing. He wants to go into a Desolator, just realizing, hey, how are we actually going to take these towers, by the way? Yeah. He's uh, re queued that a few times now. Mm. The Divine Rapier just proving not to be enough yet. Ice 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 has a Solar Crest queued up, and he's got the money to buy at least the Medallion, so I'm thinking maybe he might opt to do that. He's only holding on to a Healing Salve in his sixth slot, so definitely useful to have that Minus Armor at minimum. I, I don't mind that Solar Crest, but now you've got an Aeon Disc out on Skem, fearing his That's safety. Heavy. It's going to definitely be very useful there, up against that Ursa. Savage, clears out the mid wave, we'll go back down bot with his team, or rather Moon, excuse me. They're gonna try and just pressure that last out of tower here on the side of uh, Neon Esports. Yeah, this is a little ballsy by Raging Potato pushing this wave out, but it gives them enough money for buyback and forces them back a little bit. They gotta do. The it's just lane. the Ember Spirit though, you've got the Remnant uh, still available here. Maybe Potato trying to interrupt to keep the constant pressure there. It's not such a bad play to make, it, it's just buying t more time for Neon, and uh, Raging does jump in. He's got buyback, so he's okay with making this play. Okay, well he's caught in Static Storm, so I hope he is. He's uh, almost certainly just going to die, and he does. So, Bounty has been claimed, but like you talked about, it opens up the rest of the map, and out of that death on the Quap, they're going to get a double damage. So it's, yeah, there's value. It's okay though, right? Like, are you going to use that double damage is the, the better question because <laughs> maybe just to try and farm up your level 30. Are we getting close to a 30 on any of our Radiant cores? Not quite. They're both level 28. But uh, pretty damn handy to even just have like the 480 AoE Earthshock. Really nice to have. DJ, play hard. Going to be able to blink out in time. They'll just keep buying time. In about seven and a half minutes almost, we'll have the uh, tier five items coming up as well. So if Fnatic can't break the, the base, they can always just try and rely on those tier five items. Uh, but you do have now a Scythe of Ice as well on Ice Ice Ice. And uh, that is going to be on an 11 second cooldown, thanks to Bad Juju. So it's quite spammable. You probably see that two or three times in a team fight. And they've managed to push this all the way towards the base, although that mid lane still keeping them off a little bit. I was trying to use the Illusionist Cape to keep it out, but now that backdoor protection's gone. Savage is in on the front lines. Savage gonna try it with that Aegis. A lot of damage with the Divine Rapier, of course, as well. They'll glyph it up. Bizzle does go on to play hard. He should be okay. They do force off him out though. Moon's in now. He really wants that Tusk kill and the Remnant will secure. No buyback. Oh, buyback. He's 150 gold short. Oh no. That is that is not where you want to be. Now Raging jumps in. The if it's a bit of split pushing here from Skem down at the bot lane as well. He's trying to secure Megas right now. Raging might die for this. They force off him out. With the Yules, he should survive. Overgrowth, it will allow him to blink out in time, but your Page will die. He will buy back. Meanwhile, bot lane, Skem does go down on the Weaver. Got him. No buyback on the Weaver. No buyback. Oh. I mean, he's two minutes away. Is this oh. it? I, th I think we're it. This is it, unless Raging 
He was he got tossed back twice into the fountain. Someone needs to be in the fountain. Oh, Savage. He is in the fountain now, but he has Aegis and he will just jump out with the Abyssal. Still Ghost Form up for Yopage. He'll go for another a toss back into the fountain again. Savage is going to lose the Aegis. Is this how they turn it back around, Neon? Savage, how do you survive this? He's by himself right now. He's just getting tossed back Hi, further and further. Savage, in rage, tries to He's jump out. He can't lose the Divine. He'll try to TP. No, he, he does won. lose the Divine. It is gone. <laughs> it is now on... Who is it on? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, nobody... Is it on the ground? No, no it, it's, in, it's in the fountain. It's in the fountain. Right in the corner. Okay. Okay. Right, so they're All waiting right. for Weaver to grab it. That's uh okay. So they've got sixty seconds without the Weaver. They'll buy back on Savage. I don't think they necessarily need the Divine to win the game. Do you think they would ever go for a play where he literally hops into the fountain to pick it up? I I think he would. I think Savage is he's, he's the savage. kind of player. Yeah, he is. He's quite a beast. He'll do it. He's got that uh that Aghanim Scepter in range as well. With a BKB, he could actually get away with that. Hmm. Now you have me curious, sir. Survive for 30 seconds. That's the name of the game for Neon right now. <laughs> Remnant in. Moon, he's oh, trying to go for it. Oh, he's short. He is short. But, oh, Think Static Storm is going to be there on two as a bait. Overgrowth comes out. But Januel, he can't save his cause. Yopage goes down, Raging will buy back, back onto Savage. Savage may just man fight this, but no. He'll back off for now, wait out the BKB. Weaver's back. We do have the Weaver. And he's got buyback as well. He's got buyback and a Rapier. Not about moving that A on disc. Yeah, you, <laughs> you gotta at least let that pop first and then swap in the MKB. Savage. Fnatic, they're gonna maybe just try to secure Megas. They're one racks away from securing Megas on the side of Neon, by the way, but they just can't quite get there at the moment. So Fnatic, gonna try and secure the Mega Creeps themselves. Skem back to fighting form now, gonna feel confident going in, but he's gotta watch out for that Disruptor. There is no Static Storm, but Skem, look at the damage. Savage is in trouble. Shallow Grave is there to save him, but he's gotta get himself out of there. Sonic Wave is up from Raging. Jabs is down. Savage hey, still surrounded. Him. Tries to pop the BKB, but he does die. No buyback, and now oh, the Echo DJ! with the double Echo. DJ just turning it all around for his team. That may have been it, but the Weaver oh, doesn't die. Oh, is he gonna tick out the Poison Touch? Oh. No! He does survive! Oh, DJ! Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Play hard! He's gonna get caught! Moon will be able to get the kill! Snowball? He does snowball, but there's no way out, surely. No, Skem's back! They do get the task, Moon. He does get the hex off there with Ice Ice Ice. Skem could be in trouble! He can't die like this! He'll try to fight back! The overgrowth is there! Oh my goodness! And this game is not over, sir. We are still going. Oh, they're like, heal up. Heal up the tower. We did everything. <laughs> Your push is up in 15 seconds. Skem. He's got to defend. It's a... 3v2 situation, but you do have Yopage up soon, and I don't think Fnatic are willing to risk it without Savage. Tier 4 tower's gone. One of them. Uh-oh. Like, Tier 3 tower's gone. What do you defend if you're this Weaver? Can't defend everything. It's a long Roshan respawn as well. Oh boy. It's uh, 2 minutes and 10 seconds. That definitely is a, a longer respawn. And Okay, so what we've uh, what we've learned over the course of the past few minutes is uh, Savage is no longer the carry, it's DJ, right? DJ's gonna he's gonna make it happen for his team now. This Earthshaker, he's the man to watch. Maybe Ember Spirit, because he's reached level 30. Okay. Alright. And he's got an arcane root bottled. <laughs> Although if he gets caught out here, that would be good. I nearly think it's worth buying something like a Hex on Skem. Like, I know it's not right-click damage, but you need to lock down these mm, slippery heroes. Even, like, get on top of the Disruptor before he's able to pop the... Oh, he's got an Ags as well now on Jabs. So Ags, Static Storm would be huge. And next Roshan as well is going to have that Ags. Oh. Still Fnatic, just... 
posturing around that Roshan. We've got a minute left. Neon, basically all up now. May I don't even know if they have smokes left. They do. Genuor holds one. All right. Buybacks are on Ember, Shaker, and Weaver. So those are the ones to watch. They're going to run in. Well, Static Storm's going to be there. It's only on the tree, though, but Savage does jump onto Yopage. Snowball will save. Back onto Savage. Onto the tree. No, in fact, they're going into the back lines. They want Jabs dead on that Disruptor. No, they'll leave him be. They're trying to go after Ice Ice Ice. Jabs is getting out of there. Savage, meanwhile, still trying to kite around. He does get Januel. How is this Disruptor still alive? Now they do end up finding that Weaver Skem. But the Aeon Disc, it will save him. Sonic Wave comes through from Raging. Moon and Savage will get the Weaver. He does have buyback, though. And now they'll continue for more. Snowball in from Playhard, trying to buy more time. Skem, he will buy back and come in. But DJ oh, in with the Echoes. They get the tie back. Skem's gone the GG. Oh, it has been called. <laughs> Oh, what a game number two. Fnatic, I don't know how they've done it. I don't know how. DJ, this man, his shoulders must be hurting right now, Danok. Someone get him a masseuse. He needs it. What did we say at the start of this game? DJ needs those heroes that he's able to make the flashy plays with. And god damn, did he? <laughs> that double echo slam twice to be able to turn the game in his favor. And... Yeah, I mean, even with that Weaver buying back, if you go back into the team fight, you don't have that Rapier, you don't really do anything, you know? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, and with that, I mean, it's a it's a one-to-one -one for this series as well. One more left, though. Boom Esports are going to be up against Reality Rift straight after this. There is going to be probably a 20-minute break unless both teams are ready to go. But it is MLP Dota and it is the lovely Danog. We'll see you up again in, in about 20 minutes. To, uh, to see how our final series does pan out. We'll see you then.